Good morning. My name is Dave, and I've been censored by YouTube. After posting my video on Isaac and Abraham's offering of him on Mount Moriah, I received an email from YouTube. My video on Genesis 22 got caught for violating YouTube's policies on sex, violence, and nudity. Now the big thing you need to realize is you only get three strikes on YouTube and then your channel is removed from that platform. Luckily, they didn't count this as a violation of their policy this time. They did remove the video from YouTube though, but they allowed me to appeal their decision. Now I'm sure there are some out there who would see this as an example of cancel culture. I don't see it that way at all. I think they were doing their job and keeping this platform safe for others. And I totally agree with their policies. I'm a big proponent of keeping platforms like YouTube safe for everyone. Instead of seeing this as some sort of movement to keep certain people or voices off of YouTube, I think this is a great illustration of what I was trying to communicate in my last video. Many biblical stories are not PG-13 stories. They're harsh, edgy, and sometimes downright violent or sexual in their nature. In fact, Genesis contains more than its fair share of stories that press the boundaries of what we would call safe stories. The story of Abraham offering Isaac on Mount Moriah contains all of this. You have Abraham and Sarah's sexual abuse of their slave, Hagar. I know that some would argue that this was all part of the culture that day, but really, Hagar was most likely a young woman, and we know that Abraham was very old when Sarah suggested, hey, why don't we use Hagar sexually to have a baby by her? And I don't think Hagar was thinking, oh, cool, I get to have sex with this old guy. And I'm sure that she did not willingly consent to this. In fact, immediately after this, we're told that she despised Sarah. She tried to flee from them because Sarah was mistreating her. And finally, Sarah and Abraham send her and her child away after Isaac is born. And we haven't even gotten to the offering of Isaac on Mount Moriah yet. When God demands a sacrifice from Abraham, and let's see if I can say this without raising any alarm bells on the YouTube side again, but this really is a very brutal story. God demands that Abraham take his only, his beloved son, and sacrifice him on a mountain. And the story contains all the details, preparing for this, collecting the wood, getting the animals, going on their journey, climbing the mountain, tying up Isaac, and Abraham getting out his knife ready to kill his only, his beloved son before God intervenes and steps in. Almost every aspect of this story violates YouTube's policies in some way, shape, form, or manner and it should rattle your moral compass as well. Now we could argue that this story has been passed down to us for over two millennium, and because of its formative role within Western tradition and culture, it shouldn't violate YouTube's policies. But their search algorithms don't know that. I'm sure that this video was first flagged by a computer that was searching for material that violates YouTube's policies on its platform. At the same time, while our culture has passed this story down to us, it also has another effect on the story. As stories get passed down within a tradition, there is a leveling down or domesticating effect. Over time, certain facets of a story are overlooked and the sharp edges of the story get rubbed smooth. They get domesticated or tamed. They're made safe. And one of the goals of biblical interpretation is to recapture those edges, to de-domesticate them, to turn the house dog back into a wolf. In this way, the text then confronts us anew. 
It challenges us. It scares us. It makes demands on what we think, what we do, and how we live our lives. This is one of the goals of this channel, to recover those aspects of the biblical texts and stories that we've either lost over time or have domesticated, to allow the text to speak to us anew, to read it with a new set of glasses on. Where was I? Oh yeah, let's cut a long story short here. Now I took advantage of YouTube's grace to allow me to appeal their decision. I toned down some of my wording in the description under the video, perhaps I was being a bit too provocative there. And after review, they agreed that my video did not violate their policies. So Abraham's sacrifice of Isaac is back up on YouTube again. And life is good once again. I'll continue my exploration of Genesis. I think I only have one or two more stories to go before I reach my top 10 stories from Genesis. Then I want to add a final appendage to that series on women in Genesis, because they're often overlooked when we teach the story of Genesis, but they make up a huge percentage of the stories. In fact, if you're looking at Genesis as the promised seed and how the nation of Israel gets started, it takes two to tango. I want to give just a short note as to why I'm doing a short and slightly different video this week. First off, I wanted to explain why the Genesis story got taken down and put up in case you were watching that on YouTube. Second thing is, I thought it was a great example of how provocative biblical stories can be and why it's dangerous sometimes to study them. And then the third thing is a personal note. My heart went out of sync again this week and so I spent a day in the hospital getting jump started again. Actually, it's more like jump stop. They actually stop your heart so it gets put back in rhythm again. That takes a lot out of you. So I hope you see the point as to why I did this very different video this week and how policies like YouTube's can help us understand just how provocative the biblical text will be. Until next week when we jump back into another story in Genesis, peace. Peace.